be adjourned. I move the question to come out. We now go on to matters selected for the adjournment. Um, item one is in the name of Deputy Michelle Mulhern. Deputy is five minutes. Thank you, Vice Karen Corla. Um, there is a lot of debate about the excellent wind speeds we have along the western seaboard of our country. What is a bit like at the moment drilling a few trial holes for oil and still not being able to assess or quantify the actual resource that we have. Drilling a few uh, holes for oil doesn't actually constitute hard information about what the, the resource is. Um, the reality is, notwithstanding all the fine speak about our renewable wind energy resource, we have the best wind speeds in Europe, but we are decades behind our European neighbours in the development of our wind energy potential. It is important we stop guessing and actually have an objective measurement of the resource. Firstly, investors can be told this is a commodity. The productivity and returns can be calculated at certain heights, whether it be 50 metres, 100 or 150. This is bankable information which can fast track investment into the wind industry. We get the quality of production data known as P90 and this is what bankers demand uh, when they look to whether or not they're going to invest in um, uh, wind, industry uh, uh, wind industry products and this is the sort of information we can take to the e likes of the ECB and the UK Treasury. It also allows government to be real realistic about um, the actual commodity when assessing how wind can contribute to our targets of 40% renewable energy production by 2020 and reducing our carbon emissions. And when the state is dealing with investors, including uh, the recent proposal by the British government that it would be interested in subsidising the Irish wind farm industry, we then know what we are dealing with and what we should be looking for and what terms we should be striking. This information will be valuable for county councils and planning authorities so that the optimum location and heights for turbines can be decided to achieve the best productivity with the least number of turbines. We don't need to have wind turbines in every location where the wind blows, but it would allow us to also to plan our priorities as to where we should be building the grid, the transmission grid in this country and where not. The wind is our indigenous natural resource, the same as oil, gas and peat. We want to avoid a situation whereby the state is reliant on investors to ascertain the value of this commodity. This is one of the reoccurring themes that has blighted the progress uh, in the car of gas field, uh, that the best deal was not obtained uh, to the benefit of the Irish, our Irish citizens when we were developing our own natural resource. But above all, the Irish public are entitled to the full knowledge of the value of this commodity. The people of the West would be required to accommodate the burden of the infrastructure, such as wind turbines and transmission lines, which need to be constructed for the benefit of the entire country. They need to be shown what the prize is and what the community benefits can be for, the, for, local, for, for people living in the West. If the government ambitions for the development of our wind energy capacity and achieving European targets are to be fulfilled, then the ordinary citizen must embrace and partake in the journey towards their, this realisation. I just want to say the people of the West want to play their part in the economic recovery of the country, but not by being told by some experts, well, this is what's best for you. Uh, people are intelligent enough to appreciate if it's a good deal, it's a good deal. And if wind is the, the resource to be developed, uh, people will get behind it. But there has to be dialogue and there has to be transparency. I want to ask the Minister if the Department has ever, ever measured the resource or does it intend to properly do so. This resource assessment could be carried out using resource data which is already held by MetAaron, Quilcha and Bordnamona in conjunction with separate assessments where there's gaps in the information. However, I have to say that from my own experience while on Mayo County Council, uh, where we were trying to develop a renewable energy strategy and we were looking for resource data from semi-state agencies and uh, semi-states and state agencies, the likes of Bordnamona and Quilcha, uh, they would not share this information with us, uh, even though that this information has been paid for by the Irish taxpayer. They actually refused, citing that it is commercially sensitive information. I don't think this is acceptable. Either we're wor working uh, in unison on this or we are not. Finally, the kernel of this is, does the Minister accept the resource needs to be measured? I believe it does, and I think it's a critical starting point in our journey towards a true realisation of the potential of our wind energy uh, resource. Uh, and I just wanted to ask what steps are going to be taken, and if the Minister doesn't think that we need to be doing this, could he please tell me why?
Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, the Minister has five minutes to reply. Thank you, uh, Cahir. Look. Uh, and I'd like to thank the deputy for raising the the issue, uh, something that we're going to have to deal with much more substantially into the future. The seasonal and annual mean speed, wind speed per county have been modelled by Sustainable Energy Ireland, who have responsibility for the production of the National Wind Atlas. The mean wind speed figure might provide an indication for a county and a useful comparison of a county to other co counties. But local factors are always critical in producing the actual mean wind speed at a site. Such local factors include altitude, aspect, topography, land use and exposure. As a result, the mean annual wind speed at different locations within a county can vary greatly. A particular site's annual mean wind speed can be estimated using the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland SEAI online wind atlas, which is available on the, on the SEAI website. This will provide a better indication of the potential mean wind speed in a locality as opposed to the county's mean figures. At a national level, the estimated access, accessible wind resource on land in 2020 2020 is 12,000 MW, using uh, the methodology developed by SEAI. My department is in discussions with SEAI regarding plans to update this information and data. SEAI advises that the accessible resource estimates account for the following constraints, amongst others. Minimum recommended spacing between turbines, extracted wind speeds below 7.5 metres per second, Buffer zones on and around habitation, roads, lakes, infrastructure and airports. Cost. Social acceptance of wind turbines. Current installed renewable generating plants capacity is at 1,776 MW. Estimates for the amount of installed renewable energy capacity needed to reach our 2020 targets are in the order of 4,630 to 5,800 megawatts. Clearly, the accessible resource far exceeds what will be required for domestic needs. High fossil fuel prices and geopolitical uncertainty underline the importance of renewable energy for security of supply and sustainable energy production. It is clear that renewable energy has a crucial role to play in providing us with a cleaner, more sustainable source of fuel in the context of climate change. The European Union has also recognised the important role that renewable energy can play to ensure that member states harness the benefits of renewable energy. Each country has been, has been given a binding renewable energy target that they have to achieve by 2020. Ireland's target of 16% overall of all energy consumed across transport, heating, electricity is a five-fold increase on where we were in 2005 and will be very challenging, but it is deliverable. Ireland has one of the best wind resources in all of Europe. The bulk of our overall renewable energy target will be met through wind. This is because of the scale of our wind resources. By 2020, some 36% of our consumption in the electricity sector will be from wind-generated electricity. We have made great strides in Ireland in the past decade in increasing our use of renewable energy. In 2003, only 4.3% of our electricity consumption was from renewable sources. At the end of last year, this was up to 13 per cent, mainly due to the large increase in wind, wind energy. Wind-generated electricity is, is, is supported through a feed-in tariff scheme known as REFIT. This means that a minimum price is paid to renewable generators over 15 years to allow them to finance renewable projects. Studies by Airgrid and SEAI have shown that wind energy reduces the market price of all electricity at certain times which benefits consumers and offsets any cost of the refit scheme. Developing a large amount of renewable energy over the next decade will mean that significant electricity grid upgrades are needed. Airgrid, Airgrid's Grid 25 strategy and implementation plans set out how this can be done. New electricity infrastructure is necessary to transport this renewable electricity. What we will see over the next de decade is a transformation of our electricity landscape from one where we are highly dependent on fossil fuel to one where renewable energy makes a significant contribution. Minister Rabbit was in attendance at the British Irish Council meeting with the Taoiseach in London yesterday. The, con the considerable potential for close cooperation across these islands for the development and trade and trading of renewable energy was the main focus of the agenda at that meeting and we will continue to work with the UK, Northern Ireland and Scotland to deliver on the shared opportunity and challenge 
I thank the, the deputy for raising the issue. I hope that I hope the reply was of some benefit. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, the next um, selection for the adjournment is Deputy Owen Murphy. Deputy Owen Murphy, you have five minutes. Thank you, Lance Cancola, and uh, thank you, Minister, for being here to take this matter on the adjournment. Um, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, you, Minister, and the Government for the initiative that you've taken in this area already as part of the larger jobs initiative programme. It is important that there is consistency with our nearest neighbours in this regard.